Hey, looks like we're live. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Alina Islam, and I'm a senior research associate here at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar focuses on green chip commodities, an exploration company focusing on battery and clean energy commodities. For the webinar today, we have with us Trumbull Fisher, Director and CEO, and Peter Mullins, Technical Advisor. Trumbull and Peter will provide an introduction to the company, including an overview of its current portfolio and catalysts that may lie ahead. After the presentation, we'll take your questions live. Please send us your questions by the chat box and we'll get through as many as we can. Before we get started though, I just need to mention a few disclosures. For green ship commodities, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the green shift commodities corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for green shift specific disclosures. With that gentlemen, I'll hand it over to you. Please take it away. Wonderful, thank you very much for the kind introduction and thank you very much for everybody joining the presentation today. My name is uh, Trumbull Fisher and as mentioned, I'm the CEO and director of Green Shift Commodities. We are a battery and clean energy commodity company, and we are looking to help meet the net zero goals of the world. I'm joined by my colleague, Pete Mullins, technical advisor, and I will let him introduce himself in a moment. But a little bit of background on myself is uh, I've primarily been around capital markets for the better part of about 17 years. I have worked both on the sell side at investment banks raising significant amount of capital, mostly for commodity companies, as well as co-founding a hedge fund and investing in many different companies. Since that, I have uh, gone over to the issuer side where I have uh, helped out both public and private companies, anywhere from board member to chairman to executive roles within the company. Now, I won't, uh, I won't read you all the small print, but again, I will mention that we are speaking about some forward-looking statements, so I would encourage you to, uh, to read this on your own time. The deck is found on our website and, uh, and as you see fit. So the company has, uh, has shifted quite significantly in the last year. I became CEO of, uh, of Green Shift Commodities in August of 2022. And before that, it was a company called U308 that you may be familiar with. With that change, not only have we changed the name, but we have had many different changes. We have strengthened the board, we've improved management, and we've improved the treasury of the company that you're going to see later in this presentation. We've uplisted to the TSX Venture. And of course, we do have this new strategy and new vision in companies seeing the entire green shift metals movement uh, and cleaner energy that is happening in the world. On that note, we have recently announced a new acquisition of a lithium property in Argentina. We believe that will be closing very, very shortly and you will learn about it further in this presentation. So not only are we excited about the new lithium project that we believe we will be closing on shortly, but we're also very proud of our history of this company of having a uranium asset in Colombia. That uranium asset consists of uranium and other battery metals that are needed, including vanadium, phosphate, and other rare earths. We believe with the acquisition of the lithium asset in Argentina, it is an all-encompassing clean energy company to help with the global movement, as I mentioned. We very firmly believe that we have the right foundations for success. There's not one element of this company that makes this successful, but many different aspects put together. Starting with our Berlin asset, 
of 22 million pounds of uranium that, of course, is needed for clean base load energy. Uh, but adding in the other elements of this lithium acquisition and the other, other battery metals that we have on our Berlin project in Colombia. The acquisition in Argentina is absolutely massive. To put it in perspective, it is 500,000 hectares. And to give you an idea, that is six times the size of uh, Manhattan. So very, very significant property that we have announced. There's pegmatite structures that are mapped, and we have mapping done for over 100 kilometers. The grade of the lithium from the past work is quite significant, and I'll let Pete get into that in a, in a few moments. Now, one of the things that makes a company successful in addition to its assets are, of course, the people. There can't be one person or one type of person that makes it successful, but many. So we obviously have capital markets experience, uh, we know a lot of the, the, the right capital to get, and we know the right places to go and how to manage that. But we also have, with the acquisition, we are bringing in over 150 years of combined technical experience in the mining field. That starts with Pete Mullins, and it'll continue on with the team that he will introduce you to in a few moments. So when you bring all these elements together, including the assets, and the team that have these expertise, we really feel like we have the foundation for success to start with a very exciting 2023. Now, what I wanna bring your attention to on this slide is a couple of things. To start with is our working capital. Our working capital is consisted of cash and also our liquid securities and consolidated uranium and Labrador uranium, which are both liquid public companies. We have approximately a total of $5 million in working capital between our cash and those liquid securities. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention to is Mega Uranium being a top shareholder. That company was led by Richard Patricio, and he has participated in the last two financings, most recently the one completed in December of 2022. Richard not only believes in the past of this company being the Colombian asset with 22 million pounds of uranium, but he also very much supports and believes in the future and the future vision of this company of becoming an all encompassing green energy company. The leadership, I won't, uh, I won't bore you with speaking about myself again, uh, but I will highlight a few uh, key people. <laughs> Dr. Richard Spencer is currently our chairman. He was CEO and of course has moved to the chairman role. He is a, uh, he has significant experience in South America, spends most of his time there and is a geologist. So he knows not only our project in Colombia extremely well, but he has a lot of experience down in South America. Marty Tunney is somebody who's extremely important to the company. He has experience in investment banking at both CIBC and Raymond James, and he's also a mining engineer. Obviously, this speaks to um, him being a key member for us to bounce ideas off, uh, both on the capital market side as well on the mining side. Now, lithium. Let's let's talk about lithium a little bit. Uh, I will sum up lithium by saying, if you could please look at the the graph on the left hand side. The demand is absolutely massive, and we are in a structural deficit of supply. Lithium, of course, is not only used just for guys like Elon Musk and the Tesla movement and the, the car movement, but all of us that have smartphones, if you're using a handheld drill at home that doesn't have a cord, there's lithium batteries, it is only going to continue. And that is why the chart on the left looks the way it does is because of this demand. There is a significant supply shortage, and we feel we are putting ourselves in a good position to help with this and help with the movement. Hence, our acquisition announcement in Argentina. With saying that, I would love it if I could turn it over to uh, my colleague, Pete Mullins. Pete, if you could maybe um, speak a little bit about your, your past, that is quite interesting. Uh, the Argentinian acquisition and uh, the team that this is coming with, and uh, and we'll take it from there. Thanks, Trumbull. Uh, I'm Peter Mullins. I'm a geologist. I have over 35 years' experience. 
I work with both major companies and junior companies. Um, I've been involved in Argentina since 1994 on and off, have about 28 years experience there. So I'm very familiar with the country and South America. I spent the last 20 years in the Canadian junior markets um, and have a lot of experience on the North American capital markets. I've been involved in a lot of financings. Some of the more important um, juniors I've joined from an early stage was Aquiline Resources in 2002. I was a founding member of that company and involved in the acquisitions in Argentina back in 2002, 2003. Followed um, the major acquisitions there through uh, resource building, um, PFS studies, until eventual buyout by Pan American Silver in 2009 for $650 million. I was also involved in Laramide Resources, which were participated in the Iranian bull market from 2003 to 2012. I was a director and VP exploration there. And I was a founding shareholder and director of another company, Lydian Resources, which made a major discovery in Armenia, and we saw it through to feasibility study. I'm very excited to be uh, working with Greenshift. Um, I am getting focused now more on this on, on, on this challenge to provide these green metals, including lithium and copper, nickel, various others. I'm also very excited to be uh, working back in Argentina, having had quite significant success there in the past. Argentina is one of the top uh, lithium producing countries in the world. Currently has two operating mines, they're brine projects. They're up in the north of the country. Uh, one of them, Sale de Hombre, has been operating since the mid 1980s and has been one of the mainstays of the lithium industry for the last 30 years. What's more important is there's a multiple projects coming online. Um, this is there's considered to be a lot of production coming on over the over, over, over the next four to five to ten years with multiple projects in what's called the lithium triangle. What's happened with this is a lot of interest with government has come into the sector with the development of the lithium. Um, it's a whole new industry. It's growing um, It's supporting the green industry has a lot of support from places like Europe, and China. And the government regulators are coming on side now as well. Uh, in, in addition, apart from the three states, most of these projects are brine projects and occur in three provinces in the north, Huhui, Salta and Cajamarca. There's other provinces that are becoming supportive as well. They want to get on the, on the, on the bandwagon and have lithium. In, if they have lithium in their province, they want to support that as well. One of these... Uh, provinces is Rio Negro, which is in central Argentina. It's in northern Patagonia. Um, it it has it doesn't have brine potential though, but it has potential hard rock uh, potential. And there's a lot of support from the government to see try and see this industry develop. As I said, I've had about 28 years in Argentina. During this time, I've made a lot of contacts. Um, Greenshift, as a company, is completing a deal with a private company in Argentina. And this private company comes with a dedicated Argentinian technical team. The team has in excess of 150 years of combined experience, a lot of this in lithium, so they come with experience in lithium. Um, the program manager is Pedro Vera. I've known Pedro since 1994. Um, he's, a, he's a geologist. More importantly, with Pedro, he has a lot of environmental and land management experience. Um, he's very accustomed to liaising with government departments and local, and more importantly, local communities. This sort of lies and is becoming more and more um, uh, important, and this social license is very important as well. Included also is Nicholas Stozel. He spent the last five years looking for uh, pegmatite or spodumene bearing pegmatites in, cent in northern central Argentina, and he brings a lot of experience to the to the table. Mario Bellot as well has 35 years experience in non-metallic mineral exploration, including lithium, uh, potash, barite. And we have a uh, logistics manager, Claudio Raj, who I've known since 94 as well. And more importantly with Claudio, he has a lot of political experience and a lot of contacts. Hard rock lithium versus brines. 
Most of the companies within Argentina are exploring for brine projects, but this is becoming a crowded space, both logistically, um, getting equipment with people and also with, with the, the, the regulatory environment. Um, recently, there's been a lot of success with the hard rock deposits, in, particularly in Western Australia and Quebec, with spodumene uh, development, um, with direct shipping ore. Green Shift sees this as a big opportunity, particularly in Argentina. There's lot, much, much less competition on the hard rock side in Argentina, and we have a first mover advantage. This can be seen in Rio Negro, where we've, we've managed to acquire a private company with 500,000 hectares. Um, and Greenshift intends to focus on this hard rock potential. Um, I have major first mover advantage. The other advantage with hard rock lithium versus brine is generally it's higher grade. Um, it has potential to have a faster path to production with a more straightforward path and is less technically challenging. Um, as we've stated, GCOM is completing this acquisition of a private company with 500,000 hectares of tenements. This is largely focused on Rio Negro province in the centre of, of the slide. Um, the main project or the, the primary project that we're, we're focusing on now is in the south. It's approximately 50,000 hectares or 10% of this larger package. Um, had lithium discovered in the 1960s with trenching and sampling. Um, it's an area of about 40 kilometres by 20 kilometres um, and it has significant uh, known pegmatites with, um, with uh, lithium associated with it. Uh, they have the potential to have these quartz feldspar systems hosting spodumene, similar to Quebec and Western Australia. And what's interesting also is there's, there's a lot of infrastructure, particularly road access within um, Rio Negro. It's a flat-lying, uh, semi-arid area, probably very similar to Wyoming. The, the Manuel Choikia or La Pintada granite target is a zone about 12 kilometres by 7 kilometres in southern Rio Negro. As I said, it's part of this acquisition, this 500,000 hectares. It contains up to 19 separate lithium pegmatite bodies with significant lithium grades and has potential for broader zones of disseminated lithium What's more important is a clear path to uh, access to work and potential to discovery. Uh, we're completing this uh, acquisition. We anticipate it will close in uh, February 2023. For the last six months, the private company in Argentina has been uh, staking land, completing land acquisitions, commencing the social licensing, commencing, commencing uh, liaising with the local government and with, with, with the landowners. Following um, closing, we're developing now a program to get started. It's a, it's a fairly early stage grassroots program. It will be involved mapping, sampling. We'll get focused on the more uh, known areas to begin with. And with time, we'll expand out to district scale exploration. And this is what really excites me about the project. We have the potential here to in, discover an entire district of spodumene bearing pegmatites and uh, develop into a significant mid-tier company. Great. With that, I'll pass back to Trumbull. Thank you very much, uh, Pete. So taking you back a little bit to our Berlin deposit in Columbia, this of course is our deposit that has the 22 million pounds of uranium on it, as well as other battery uh, metal components. Things that are very important to a uh, to a, a project like this is, of course, its location and its uh, infrastructure that is around it. This project is located right in between Medellin and Bogota, and it has its there is infrastructure that is very very close. Obviously, that helps with capex uh, in the future. We are close to power. We're close to port, rail, and roads, uh, so it makes it extremely extremely attractive going forward. As I mentioned, it, uh, it is 22 million pounds, the historical resource of uranium, but it also consists of nickel, vanadium, and phosphate. The size of the project is, uh, is approximately 7,000 hectares, and there's been significant work, money and work done on the project in the past, consisting of over 18,000 meters of drilling that has been done. I think what our goal is uh, going forward 
is I think we would like to uh, do more metallurgical work. We would like to improve the uh, phosphate recovery. The other recoveries is uh, is 90% plus, and we would like to increase this for phosphate and possibly update the PEA. But as I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation, you can now see why we believe that the Berlin deposit alone with the uranium underpins the value of this company as a whole. So why green shift and why now? Well, there's many components that come into that. As I mentioned, we have a diversified team around us, not only capital markets, but people with legal background, people with connections in South America, and people with a lot of experience in the field. We are expanding into, a, into lithium to become an all-encompassing green metal energy company. We have the ability to have a district scale lithium discovery. And of course, we are seeing other opportunities within South America due to our connections and our team that we believe other companies are not seeing for further acquisitions, which is highly attractive and should be to prospective shareholders. So we think with that, we are set up extremely well for 2023. We think that it's going to be an exciting year with closing this acquisition and getting out and doing some work and putting out further news. And with that, I thank you very much for joining us today uh, to learn about the Green Shift story. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Trumbull and Peter. Uh, that was a great presentation. So we will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. Just as a reminder for our audience, you can type in your questions into the chat box at any time. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions here. Uh, first off, you know, when you think about Argentina, most people think about brine, not really hard rock. I know you touched on that during your presentation, but can you talk about how this project is somewhat unique compared to some of its peers in the region? Do you want me to handle that, Trump? Yeah, go for it, please, Pete. Yeah, I, I, the main difference is, as, as, as you already stated, most of the um, our competitors in Argentina are interested in the brines, which in the north, up in the Altiplano, it's at a high altitude, 4,000 to 5,000 metres, and they require a very significant amount of, of, of water. It involves um, uh, a lot of uh, evaporation as well. And there's a lot of, uh, it's a long lead time into these larger brine projects. I mean, they're going to be very significant producers. Um, Lithium Americas is just currently coming to production now and they completed a feasibility study about six years ago, and that, that's the sort of lead time. The potential that's been shown in Western Australia and Quebec with these spodumen or hard rock type deposits is they're less technically challenging. It is possible to do direct shipping ore. Um, some of the Western Australian companies have had a lot of success with that recently, and there's a clearer, um, more straightforward path to production. Um, on, the, on, on the lesser side, we are very early stage. We, you know, we, we haven't defined a resource yet. We need to find a resource. But due to less uh, competitive activity, we've managed to stake a very large area. We're looking at other potential acquisitions within Argentina as well. We're not competing with the, with, with the Chinese groups at this stage either. China's very much involved in the lithium brine. Um, therefore, there's this first mover advantage that, that we're taking advantage of. But as I said, it's very early stage. And we need to define uh, resources we haven't drilled yet. Um, so we we do have significant work to do. But the main difference is, is this hard rock potential versus the brine. Um, and recently, this uh, some of the success of this has been shown out in Western Australia and Quebec, where there's a number of companies doing extremely well at the moment with spodumene type pegmatites. Right. Um, so, you know, kind of on that note, what is the major risk that you see for this project? Would it be environmental, social, or political? Well, we, we are at a very early stage at this stage, so that you know, we're not sure where our resources may, may lie yet. Um, clearly, within mining in the 21st century, all these three aspects are, are very critical. Um, we can only deal with, and some of these aspects are very much out of our hands. Um, we, we are, we are dealing with these as we speak, but they are out of our hands. So I, I put all of those three at, at the same level. Um, within Argentina, these risks, particularly from a, 
political and social point of view can vary a lot from um, area to area and particularly province to province. There's been a number of mines developed in provinces such as San Juan and Salta in Argentina over the last 20 years, but there's other provinces where there's, there's been no development and they're actually quite, quite anti-development. The one good thing about um, lithium is that it, there's a lot of government support now, particularly in the, in, in, in the uh, lithium triangle in, in the north, and the governments, both at federal level and provincial level, are getting behind this development. And what's happened is some of the other uh, provinces have looked at this and realised that there's a potential brand new industry here. Could be very significant. You know, it could be in the order of 20 to $30 billion of exports per year uh, if all of these projects get developed. And they would like to get involved as well. Um, Argentina is going through some challenging economic times at the moment. They're, they're realising they need... A, a lot more development, a lot more foreign dollars. Um, the oil industry is starting to open up a bit to foreign development. And there's been a lot of investment in, in this lithium triangle, and we think that will continue um, potentially to some of these players that are coming in, um, looking at the brines, potentially could move over towards the hard rock space as well. Now, of interest, just I think it was yesterday, GM announced that they were investing in, in uh, Lithium Americas. And I think very much moving forward, the car companies with, with the lack or the, the difficulty in accessing lithium and you know, other green metals such as uh, nickel and, and cobalt, but there's a potential real significant chance that the car companies will move much more directly into investing directly into these projects. You know, and eventually, if we can move our projects forward and make a significant discovery, you know, we would be interested in discussing with some of these uh, other groups that are further down the supply chain. All right. Um, so, Peter, you talked about the Manuel project and exploration plans that you have there. But are there other any targets on the property package that you would look to explore uh, either later this year or, or even after that? I very much so. We've it's still at a very early stage. We've we've completed. Um, we've taken the information from the known lithium and we've spread that. We've used satellite imagery to uh, look for other potential areas, but it's, it's at a very early stage and we want to get out on the ground. We haven't we haven't got on the ground very much to date and um, just to start exploring the whole belt. So uh, it, it is early stage, but we, we plan to move out from the known areas to the unknown. We plan to use that information that we have, use the satellite images. We, we have a new uh, lithium X-ray gun we can use in the field to um, get immediate results. Which, which is very encouraging. We have experienced uh, geologists that understand these systems. Um, they are zone systems that, that, that zone a lot from tantalum in the, in the core through lithium out to sheelite. We'll be using this geochem information as well to look, to try and understand these zone systems much better to highlight potential areas. So how, how long do you think the uh, program, the sampling and mapping at Manuel will take? Um, well, we haven't. We're still working on that at the moment. We're, we're certainly looking at the rest of this year, um, perhaps into next year. I and mean, then we would we want to um, really get on down the ground and get focused, and understand better exactly what we have as well. Most of this work that we have is historical in nature. We want to get out there and get our own work done as well. So it will be an early stage project this year. Hopefully, moving into perhaps drilling, you know, over the next year or two. But, Certainly this year will be much more just sampling, mapping, um, using the, the uh, X-ray gun, following up the satellite images um, and getting boots on the ground and out in the field and working on those social and environmental aspects as well. I think the, uh, the other point to note on that, though, is with our team down in Argentina, they are ready to go right away of starting to work on this. There's not going to be any delay um, with after, after the acquisition does close. All right, great. Um, so just shifting focus here a bit, um, there's a question on Berlin. What is the status of metallurgical testing? It's, it's ongoing. We have been doing it. We, uh, we will continue to, we, we expect to continue to do metallurgical testing and uh, the membrane testing for improved recovery. Um, it is something that we are focused on and, uh, and we believe that it's something that we'll be advancing uh, with Berlin. All right, sounds good. So 
last question here. Um, could you maybe sum up by outlining the key catalysts uh, for investors in, let's say, the next six to 12 months? Absolutely. I think uh, first and foremost is seeing the acquisition close in uh, in Argentina. I think uh, further to that will probably be announcement of what work is going to be done. Um, and then continuing to see the company update, uh, whether it's programs like this and also news being put out uh, of what that testing does result in, as well as ongoing work in, uh, in Colombia with regards to metallurgical work, recoveries, et cetera. We are, of course, still working out both the budgets for, uh, for Berlin and for Argentina. Um, but I think that is what the next six months people can expect. I think that uh, we also, we continue to see opportunities. It has to be the right opportunity and the, uh, the price has to be right, uh, but there's definitely the potential for further acquisitions. Okay, great, uh, lots to look forward to. So that concludes the Q&A portion of our webinar. Uh, Peter and Trumbull, I would like to thank you again for taking time to host this webinar with us today. Just as a reminder for our audience, our next webinar will feature E3 Lithium, and that's tomorrow, February 2nd at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for tuning in with us, everyone. Have a great day.